As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. This is Riga, Latvia. Riga is such a beautiful place. The earliest records of Riga date to the year 1201. It actually goes back to the second century, but the first records are from 1201. This is a country that was dominated by Germans, by the Polish, by the Swedes, for 300 years by Russians. For a very brief period of 20 years, it was the independent state of Latvia. Then in 1941, the Nazi troops came here and occupied the country for four years. Then in 1945, the Soviets occupied the nation of Latvia, and Latvia was not free as an independent state again until 1991, and we were living here during that time. Wow, what a time to be here. And the moment came when Denise and I decided to move our family from Yelgava here to the capital city, right here to the city of Riga. And in fact, right where I am is where our kids grew up playing on their skateboards. This is where our kids really enjoyed life. Wow, what an experience for our children. When you obey God, it takes your whole family on an adventure of faith. You never lose when you do what the Lord tells you to do. But the church was growing. Wow, it was so amazing what was taking place in this city. We needed to find an office. We needed to buy land for the new building. It was such an exciting time. In the spring of 1992, God did a miracle, and we began broadcasting a TV program to the whole former Soviet Union, and we started on this particular TV tower. This is the big TV tower in Riga. And we begin broadcasting good news with Rick Renner from this TV tower to all the lands of the former Soviet Union, and it was amazing that God had opened this door. If you'd seen those early programs, you would have laughed your head off. They were so primitive. We filmed them in our living room with one microphone on a home video camera. They were so primitive, but it didn't matter because the people were hungry and people began tuning in to watch the program and they watched for two reasons. Number one, I was an American and there were no Americans regularly on television in the lands of the former Soviet Union. Americans were considered to be the enemy of the state. No one had regularly been on TV that was an American, and here I was. This was such an enigma that people were tuning in to see why the American was on television. Secondly, the American was talking about God. This had been an atheistic state. God had been an illegal topic. So this combination of an American on TV and the American speaking about God was a winning combination. People wanted to hear what was being communicated, and I was telling them the good news of Jesus Christ. I was beginning to teach the Bible. In fact, what the Lord had said to me was that I was to take Sunday school to all the homes of the Soviet Union. They all needed to learn the Bible, and the best way to bring them the Bible was television. So television became my Sunday school class, and millions of people began watching the program, and one day on the program, I began to say regularly, if you want to communicate with me, please write. I promise you that I'll write you back. I did not know that Soviet people loved to write letters. And in a very quick period of time, I received 800,000 letters, 800,000 pieces of mail from people that were writing to us. We didn't even have a computer yet. And now the mail was growing in piles we were counting it by the tons, 800,000 pieces of mail from people that were watching the program. And one day I said to Denise, let's do an experiment in Riga. Let's rent the biggest auditorium in the entire nation, advertise a meeting, and see who will show up. So we did 10 days of advertisements. And in those advertisements, I invited the people to come. I told them that I would be preaching with other guests, that there'd be great music, and there would be miracles and signs and wonders. Well, that was really good news, because at that time, there was not a lot of available medications, and people were very interested in miracles and signs and wonders because they needed help. So we advertised the big meeting, we rented the big venue, and we waited for the day for the meeting to come. We prayed, we trained, we believed, but we had no idea 
what was about to take place. In 1992, that big hole behind me was the site of the biggest sports palace in the Republic of Latvia. It was a hockey stadium that seated 5,000 people. And that is the venue we rented for the big meeting that we had advertised for 10 days. I remember the day finally came and Denise and I got in our car and we rode down the cobblestone street on the way to this venue. And hundreds and hundreds of people were all walking down the street in one direction. And I said to Denise, where are all these people going? We didn't realize it. They were coming to this venue to our meeting because they had heard our advertisement. They were coming to see signs and wonders and to hear the preaching of the gospel. And for five days, the auditorium was filled to overflowing. Though it seated 5,000, there were 8,000 people every night in the meetings. And by the end of those five days, an accumulation of 40,000 people had attended those meetings. And when I remember those meetings, my mind goes to Acts chapter 8, verse 6, where the Bible talks about Philip when he went down and preached in Samaria. And the Bible says the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, and they were healed, and there was great joy in that city. And today you'd say, that's me. I want to be saved. I want Jesus to come into my heart. And you've never prayed for this before. I want you to hold your hands up all over this auditorium this morning. Very quickly, let's not waste any time. I'm talking to those of you that have never prayed to receive Christ before. I'm asking you to stand up right where you sit this morning. Just stand up in your chair this morning if you would. You say, I want to receive Christ. Stand up in your chair right there. Those of you that are already Christians, I want you to pray for everyone here that does not know Christ today. But on the last night, when I stood on the stage to say goodbye to the crowd, I had a vision. I saw someone coming and laying their crutches on the stage. So I publicly said what I saw. And all of a sudden, to my left, I looked. I heard a scream. And there was that man, the lower half of his body being dead for 19 years. And suddenly he threw his crutches into the air and the bottom half of his body literally came alive. And he came walking and leaping and praising God with those crutches and laid those crutches on the stage just as I had seen. It was a week of signs and wonders and miracles and 7,000 people who needed a pastor. They needed a pastor. And the Holy Spirit said to me the last night of the meetings, all right, Rick, now what are you going to do with all these people? And I understood. It was now my responsibility to start a church, and I was to be the pastor of these new converts. Those days in that big venue were quite amazing. 7,000 people came to Christ in just a few days. And of course, they needed to be water baptized. So we brought them up the street to this building, which is filled with different swimming pools. And we baptized the people in the waters in this building. 926 people were baptized in three days. You say, how in the world do you baptize 926 people in three days? Well, you do it in groups. We had whole groups of baptizers who went into the water and waited for the people. Then the people came in in groups and we baptized them in groups. And it took three days, but finally we baptized 926 people. It was pretty exciting. It reminded me of Acts chapter 8 and verse 12 where the Bible says that the people of Samaria believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ and they were baptized both men and women. This was a real move of God that shook this nation and really established our ministry in the Soviet Union. It was amazing. But you know what? In the middle of these remarkable events, we discovered something shocking. 
the man who helped us begin our ministry was a criminal. A criminal. Can you imagine it? It was quite a shock to me when I found out. And how did I find out? I was on the stage in the big venue the very last night of the meeting and someone brought me the national newspaper and on the front page of the national newspaper was his picture and a story about his criminal activities. And I understood I could not do business with a criminal and I had to end my contracts with him and that meant I was going to lose the TV ministry. But that really launched us into our own television ministry. You know, when the devil attacks, God always moves and there's something better. And that's what happened for us and that's what God will do for you. That was an amazing week in our life. 7,000 people came to Christ, 40,000 people attended the meetings, and we baptized 926 people and found out that the man who helped us start the TV ministry was a criminal. <laughs> well, when we didn't know that, God was blessing the TV ministry. But when I found out we were in business with a criminal, I had to end that relationship. I have to tell you, it really stunned me. I was shocked to find out we had been abused by somebody I had trusted. But it thrust us into a period when we had to begin our own TV outreach, and that led me to this building. I came to this building to negotiate our very first TV contract by myself. I remember walking into this building with such trepidation because I had never negotiated for TV time by myself in the former Soviet Union. This was brand new territory. And I want to tell you, back in those days, the former Soviet Union was really like living in the wild, wild west. It was a risk just to live here. But I went into this building, I sat down, began to negotiate in Russian, and walked away with our first contract to begin broadcasting the gospel on television without anyone else's help. Little did I know that from here, I would travel the 11 time zones of the entire former Soviet Union to negotiate for television time. I was actually beginning the first Christian television network in the history of the Soviet Union. You know, you just have to begin where you are and you don't always know where you're going, but if you'll be faithful to do what you're doing right now, God will lead you in every step that you take and you'll end up somewhere wonderful. After we got the first TV contract in Riga, I began traveling the length and breadth of the entire Soviet Union. That's 11 time zones. My, back in those days when there was a deficit of fuel, I had to take cars, trains, airplanes, anything I had to do to get where I needed to go, I was going to get those contracts to broadcast the teaching of the Bible. That's what God told me to do. You have to do whatever you have to do to obey God. But while I was doing that, our office here in Yelgava was beginning to grow. Behind me is the building, which once was the offices of Rick Renner Ministries. In this building, we had a TV studio and a wonderful team. And it was while we were here that the mail began to pour in. And back in those days, we stopped counting mail by the pieces and we began counting mail by the tons. There were tons and tons of mail. And actually, this was a crisis because back in those days, we had no computers. There were no computers in the Soviet Union. There just weren't any. You couldn't even buy one. We had to bring them from the West. Well, by the time the computers finally got here, we had so much mail that we had about 800,000 pieces of mail that we had to go through. That's a lot of mail. And in this building, we used to have mail parties where all weekend long, all night long, we would open mail, read mail, process mail, serve pizza, and we just had a good time together going through the mail, tons of mail from people who were responding to the teaching of the Bible. That was the very beginning of the TV ministry, and what a wonderful time it was. But you know, when Denise and I first got married, the Lord gave us a word from Romans 10, verse 18. It says, their sound will go into all the earth, their voice will go to the ends of the world. And that really is what God had in store for us. He wanted to use us to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. You know, living in Oklahoma, when God first spoke that word to us, I thought the ends of the world was to Arkansas or maybe to Kansas. I had no idea it was going to be the ends of the earth. But you know what? If you'll obey God, 
He'll take you places you could never get to by yourself. It's an adventure when you obey the Lord, and you'll never regret having said yes or doing what the Lord has told you to do. When we were in the big meeting in Riga, in that auditorium, which was the biggest auditorium in all the Baltic states, and God's power literally invaded that place, just like the revival that came to Samaria when Philip went down and preached Christ to them. It was amazing what we saw and what we encountered in that auditorium, and 7,000 people came to Christ, and that week we water baptized 926 of them. And the Holy Spirit said to me, Rick, what are you going to do with all these people? Well, that was a good question. And I understood God was telling me to start a church and he wanted me to be their pastor. Well, how do you start a church with people who have been raised in atheism? And even though they had prayed to receive Christ, they really didn't even hardly know who Christ was. These were people who had been raised in atheism. In fact, in that big meeting, I announced that we were going to hand out free Bibles. People didn't even know what the Bible was. And actually when we handed it out, all we handed out was a New Testament. And I remember the people complaining. They said, you said you were gonna give us a Bible. This says New Testament. What is a New Testament? They didn't understand it was part of the Bible. They had no experience with scripture, no experience with religion because they had been steeped in atheism their entire lives. Well, how do you start a church with people like that? You have to teach them who is God. Who is Jesus? Why do you need salvation? What is heaven? What is hell? What is the Bible? So I made a decision to rent this building behind me. This was the Dom Kultura of the local train station. Dom Kultura was a very Soviet phrase to describe a house of culture. It was a theater that belonged to the local train station and we rented it for five weeks. And for five weeks, we invited those people that got saved to come and we packed the theater in this building. And for five weeks, we taught bare essentials of Christianity. And then at the end of that period, we announced we were starting a church. And we announced we were going to start it in the movie theater just two blocks from here. It was the central movie theater of the entire nation called the movie theater Riga. Wow, I was so excited. It was a spectacular location. Everyone knew that location and we were ready to start. And now I'd been working with people for five weeks. Now we were going to start our first service and see who would show up to be a part of the new church. After working with people for five weeks and establishing them in the bare essentials of Christianity, we finally announced we were going to start our church on Easter 1993, right in this location. Behind me is the movie theater Riga, which is one of the most famous locations in the entire nation of Latvia. I was so excited. Finally, the church was going to begin. We sent out invitations. We began to call people. We really were anticipating a monumental event to occur in this location. And then something happened I could have never, ever expected to happen. You say, what happened? The prime minister of the new country decided that he was against us. The prime minister. Have you ever had a prime minister stand against you? We had the prime minister and his entire government stand against us because they suspected that Denise and me and our team were spies. <laughs> Can you believe that? They thought we were spies. Actually, the country was full of fear at that time because the Soviet Union had just collapsed. Little Latvia was afraid of the East. They were afraid of the West. They were terrified of foreigners. And here was Rick Renner and Denise and his kids and his team. And what did they have? They had TV cameras. And they were afraid that we were really working for the CIA and that we had been sent here as spies in the disguise of a TV ministry. He said, I'm stopping them. They will never start that church at the Riga Movie Kino Theater. That's this location. And when the prime minister says no, it means no. All of this happened three days before the church was supposed to begin. <laughs> we had already invited people. People were going to come. We'd been training people and teaching people for five weeks. They were all excited about the birth of the new church. And now we've just been told we can't meet in this location 
and we don't have time to inform people about a change of venue. What did we do? Well, first of all, we had to find a new location. Where in the world are we going to meet and where can we find a place that will quickly agree to work with us? So we began searching the city of Riga and finally we found a location that would work with us in spite of this prohibition from the prime minister. And that was the location called the Academia of Science, which is just four blocks from here. It's just four blocks from here. So here's what we did. We rented the new venue over at the Academy of Science, and on Easter Sunday, 1993, we had ushers standing at this location to inform people there had been a change of venue. So when all the people showed up to church here, they had to be redirected four blocks away to the other location, and the other location is where the church began. But you know what the Bible tells us? In Romans 8, verse 31, it says, if God is for you, who can be against you? You may feel the world is against you, that your finances are against you, your family is against you. Who knows what's against you? Let me tell you, I understand. I had an entire government standing against me back in those days, but God was for me. And you know, in time, that government was finished, that prime minister was gone, and we were still here. On Easter Sunday, 1993, the Riga Good News Church was born in the building behind me. This is the Academy of Sciences, which in Russian is called Academia Nauk. And in the Academia Nauk, our church was born in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we met in the central auditorium in this building, which was once the auditorium of the Communist Party. In fact, when you walked into that auditorium, you were surrounded by reliefs of the Soviet Union. There were flags of the Soviet Union. There were emblems of the Soviet Union. There was a picture of Lenin, a picture of Marx, and a big flag of the Soviet Union right over the stage. And under the central stage, there was a huge bust of Lenin himself. And that's where I stood. That's where I preached when the church was born in this building. And the auditorium was jam-packed. People had come from all over Riga. In fact, people came from all over the Republic of Latvia because they heard what was going to happen. Many of them were watching our TV program and they wanted to be witnesses of the church being born back in those days in this amazing location. That week we saw signs and wonders, so many people repenting, coming to Christ, demons were cast out. We had literally stepped into the book of Acts. I can tell you that what the Holy Spirit did the Holy Spirit still does. I'm a living witness to the power of God. But this particular area where this is located is really a horrific area because this is the old Jewish ghetto where the Jews were put during the time that the Nazis occupied Latvia. And on two days, the Jews were marched from this area to a killing field where they were all massacred, 25,000 of them in just two days. But in this place, where there was such evil, God poured out His grace in 1993 on Easter Sunday. And we continued in this location for several years, in fact, nearly five years. And finally, I understood that if the church is going to have a future, we needed to have our own facility. We had been in this building, we'd used as much of it as we could use. We had offices on the first floor, the second floor, the third floor, even the 17th floor. The building is 23 stories tall, but we needed our own facility. So I announced we were going to start a building program. There was not a worse moment to do that. The entire nation economically was collapsed. People were believing God for milk, for bread, just to be able to buy benzene and gas for their cars. And now I'm announcing that we're going to start a building program. This was nonsensical according to the flesh. And you know how I announced it? I'll tell you, I bought a big chandelier, a big, beautiful chandelier. I brought it here from the United States. I put it on the stage, and that day when everyone came into church, everyone was saying, what is the light fixture? Where in the world did it come from? It certainly is not from here. Where did it come from? What is it? Why is it on the stage? And I came on the stage, and I said, everyone's wondering why this big chandelier is here, and I'm going to tell you, this chandelier is going to hang 
in our new church facility. And that's the way I announced that we were starting the building program. People scoffed. People said it could never be done. You'll never be able to find the money. This is Latvia. People will oppose you. People will try to stop you. Secret services will be against you. And you know what? They were all right. But it doesn't matter because God was for us. And God had given me an assignment. And when you obey God, obedience works like a magnet. Obedience will bring you finances. Obedience will bring you protection. Obedience will bring you provision. Obedience will bring you supernatural activity. Obedience works like a magnet. And when we stepped into that place of obedience, a place of faith, everything we needed began to come to us. It doesn't mean we didn't have resistance because we had real resistance along the way. But we stood in faith and eventually we moved from this location to our own land. While the TV ministry was just booming, the church in Riga was also growing and we needed a good office. So we located on the fourth floor of this building behind me. Those were our offices in the early days of the Riga Good News Church. And while we were there, God did so many marvelous things. And one of those things was the birthing of the Good News Association of Pastors and Churches. Because of the TV ministry and its influence, it was growing all over the Soviet Union, hundreds and hundreds of pastors wanted to be connected to us. So with the help of our partners, we begin to connect with all those pastors, providing them teaching materials, seminars. We literally invested millions of dollars in the lives of pastors all over the former Soviet Union. And all of that began in these offices. Also why we were here is when we began our search for land where we were going to build that big church that I had declared by faith to our congregation we were going to build. It was time for us to move out of the Academy of Sciences and construct on our own land. And the search for that land began while we were in these offices. If you have a heart to be used by God, but feel you are unlikely to be chosen for a special assignment, then this free series is just what you need to help you wake up to the fact that you are exactly the kind of person God is looking for. In this 10-part video series, you'll be able to see and hear the amazing testimonies of Rick and Denise Renner, including how they moved their family to the farthest ends of the earth, how they have seen God make the impossible become possible, and how they have witnessed the living book of Acts right in front of their eyes. This series is available in digital or physical formats, and today it is our free gift to you. We are also offering you the book, Unlikely, Our Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth, the Renner's personal story that is filled with nearly 100 pages of photos from their life of faith. One thing is sure, after you read this book and discover how unlikely it was for the Renners to do what they have done, you'll realize that nothing is impossible when you trust and believe God. God wants to tap you on the shoulder for a special assignment, and this book will help you step up to accept it. Unlikely is available today for the special price of $25. Don't delay. Contact us to request your free copy of the 10-part video series, Unlikely. And don't forget to order the book, Unlikely, our faith-filled journey to the ends of the earth. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.